this is the first of two videos. It's going to be about putting the solar and the diesel together with a battery analysis. And I hope there's not too much background noise. I'm more worried about that. The, the issue here, first and foremost, that I want to discuss is how to figure out counting how many solar panels and how many batteries we want. And that, for me, drove me a little bit crazy. I, in an earlier video, I uh, presented, and it's in this file that's going to be just on the website just a little bit, just a little after this video. It's got a whole lot of different potential battery technologies, and it's got a high case, and it's got a, a battery function, whether it's an island or a Pika and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, and then we've got what kind of battery it is. And no, this is just a longer title, excuse me. This is the kind of kind of battery type we have. Okay? We've got all of this. And here's one of the big differences. In the differences, you can get a different battery with a duration of one hour of storage or eight hours of storage. At least those are the limits in this particular case, and this whole business of how much storage you need kind of gets right into the whole issue of capacity and energy. And the issue with capacity, if, if you have a peaking plant, I'm not trying to be anti-battery in any way, shape, or form here, but if you have a peaking plant, that has essentially unlimited capacity. Its, its capacity is only limited, its storage capacity, rather, is only limited by the ability to get fuel or a fuel tank or something. For a battery, you might, you're, you charge the battery up and you have a limit on the storage capacity. That's, I use this, uh, a water heater example. Now, Consider the case of an island, the case that we're beginning on, and the case that I firmly believe is the case to begin with. And it's a real case. And it's a case where in an island, I'm going to give you a picture of a little island. This is, happens to be an island that is really being talked about, this kind of island right here. In this island, should we... Should we put in a battery, or should we, uh, uh, and, and how many batteries should we put in? Now, here is a big problem. Pretend for a moment that you have one hour of sunlight, just one hour of sunlight, okay? In that case, you, would, you could make some solar panels to push up and to, 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 store, to store electricity during that one hour of sunlight. And then you could use that stored battery capacity later to put your lights on. Now here's the problem. If you, uh, if for that one hour of, of sunlight you have one kind of solar panel that, let's say, produces, I don't know, whatever, one group of solar panels that produces one kilowatt or something, well, for each, if you have one kilowatt that you need for each hour, what you would need to do is to put in more solar panels, and each time you put in solar panels, you could put a battery associated with that, but the storage here wouldn't matter. What matters is how much sunlight, how much solar power you can get up to here, and it's exactly the same problem with wind, exactly the same problem in our island example. So worrying about and paying a whole lot more for storage is the last thing you want to do. Essentially, what if you needed uh, uh, 10 hours, let's say, of, of electricity from that one hour of sunlight, what you would have to build is 10 extra solar panels. And those 10 extra solar panels would be associated with 10 extra batteries. And the whole issue would be the capacity constraint. Now... 
let's talk about something else where and, and now let's get into this this video really okay this is I, I've kind of tried to introduce this whole idea of capacity constraints and energy constraints which is is really the subject of this video I hope it's clear and I want to show you situations in which perhaps you don't need quite as much storage. And I want to show you, uh, uh, I want to, that's for sure, whether I do or not is an entirely different question. Other situations where you may want this storage, or instead you might want to just put a whole bunch of batteries with less storage in. And to do that, we're going to take that database I just showed you, put it in Power BI, and, and, and show you just kind of the effectiveness of Power BI in terms of, of uh, presenting data. And to show you a counterexample, I'm going to show you perhaps electricity prices in Australia. And in Australia, I have a whole nother section, something that is not generating much interest, not, nothing I do generates much interest, too bad, who cares. Uh, the, the, uh, I try to collect all these merchant price, prices around the world. In Australia, they have these large price spikes. These price spikes can go on for an entire day. That's what I'm going to show you. And in that case, perhaps you want to get storage from low cost hours and you have unlimited it's not like the solar or the wind where you're limited to a couple of hours of storage you have unlimited ability to get this up here and store this power and you can selectively take really low cost hours to store the power and then and and then get it into storage so in this video i'm going to show you a little bit of australia uh, uh, market prices, but then I'm also going to show you kind of how to take these this database and figure out what kind of battery do we want to put in, and I, and I want to again try as best I can. I'm not very good at this, but I want to try to really show you what the advantages and disadvantages of data presentation in. Power BI versus Excel. I'm going to use both an example of uh, merchant prices in Australia and this, this database. Okay, so let's begin. You see the issue. Now, I already showed you. I'm going to save this thing here a little bit. I already showed you that the issue is in this uh, a database of batteries. Should we... Should we use a longer duration of, of uh, batteries or a shorter duration? Now, when I, uh, let's just go through some of the variables. So we had all these, these, these uh, battery types. Then we have the size of the batteries, how long the batteries last, uh, the depth of discharge, and then the project life. If you have a shorter project life, there's a much, much, higher carrying charge rate, especially when the uh, uh, carrying charge is really high. And then we have a couple of memo fields, which are kind of not very important. How much energy you would use in a year and, and uh, other things. And then they give you the initial capital cost. And there's some kind of blanks here, which doesn't really matter. And how much is spent for the conversion, the DC, the ba main battery, and how much is spent basically for the inverter to take when you discharge getting it back to uh, AC. I think that's, I hope that's right. Okay. Uh, then then you have uh, other, other costs here that they, they put in, and you have a total cost per kilowatt hour, which is very, very, very confusing to me. This is not the cost per kilowatt hour of production. This is the cost for one discharge cycle. So in here, if we have eight hours, let's look at this one. And how about another one? I'm trying to look at one with four. Here, here, here. Eight 
Oh no, this is still pump storage. Excuse me. Uh, 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 how about how about uh, just a minute? Just a minute. It's okay. It's okay. How about some lithium batteries? We have. Uh, this is lead. Uh, let's go. We uh, 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 crap. Uh, we have eight versus four versus one. And if it's one, the cost is eight hundred. If it's eight, the cost is seven hundred per hour stored. So it's actually more costly for one hour storage than for eight hour storage if you measured on the basis of storage. Now on this second one, I said, no, no, no. Let's let's take the multiply how many hours of storage uh, we uh, uh, divide. Just a second. We have the how much power we have, the rating in megawatts, and let's take the cost per kilowatt hour. So we're going to take the cost per kilowatt hour, and we're going to uh, 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 multiply that by the the hours, and finally divide it by the uh, capacity. Okay. That multiplies by the duration of the hours, and n uh, we we multiply the cost, and this gives you the cost per kilowatt. I did that really badly. I know I did that really badly, but we get the cost per kilowatt instead of the cost per kilowatt hour. And what we should see is if we look back at our lithium example, if we only have one hour storage, we have a lot lower cost than if we have four hours. I think if we I, I wonder where I can do this. I'm going to just very temporarily take this one divided by this one. And it's cheaper if we can store it. It's cheaper to get more storage if storage is what we really need. Okay? If the constraint is not the capacity that goes into the battery, but the amount of energy need we need outside of the batteries. And then it has the O&M expense, and most imp really importantly, has the efficiency. And some of these uh, zinc batteries, for example, they look really, really uh, low cost, I think. These are probably lower cost than other costs, but they have a, a worse efficiency. How do we make a trade-off between efficiency and uh, uh, cost? And then we have the replacement cost, which is really important factor, as well as the Charging cost, which we don't use, or the anything else. So that's in our thing called battery uh, battery blah 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 battery database battery blah blah days whatever. Okay, now let's uh, go and let's see how. Now here here's here's. Would you mind giving me one second here? In the folder called Chapter 5, Courses Chapter 5 in the Google Drive, Renewable Energy Batteries, you can go to Lazard, Levelized Cost of Storage Version 2. Very nice thing. That's where we got all the data if you looked at the other uh, report. And then they have, oh, look at all these comparisons of levelized cost per megawatt hour, and they have little dots and everything else. They have all these different batteries. And then they even divide it by O&M cost and, and all of that. And they put low end and high end. And look at all this stuff. Capital cost comparison. Look at all this stuff. CAGR comparison. Now, and then they have something really pretty good, actually, the IR. And that's what I kind of looked at. I go, oh, God, how do they get these IRRs for the batteries? Okay, now, let's try getting it in. Power BI, and I want to show, I, I've kind of practiced here, Shh. shouldn't really admit that. I'm going to make a new file, okay, and I, okay, as usual, I'm going to get the data, I'm going to show you every single step, because it drives me nuts when you miss one little step, so this is in our renewable folder with batteries, I hope that's not too mysterious. And that folder I've just been talking about is this one called Solar, Diesel, and Battery. And so all we do is we read that in. Now, I should tell you something before I go into this. And instead of, you know, 
wasting a whole lot of time. I want to tell you that at first, these things were on the, on the top of the rows, all of these things in separate rows. And these were all on the columns. And I thought it was a, you can transpose things in Power BI. I'm sure that works fine, and I'm sure some Power BI person would say, oh, no, 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 you can do everything in Power BI, no problem with doing everything. But I think it's a whole lot easier. I've tried it a few times. It's a whole lot easier to put one title at the top, and then if you've got kind of multiple filters, obviously put those at the side and be very careful that you don't have any blank columns up here. This is very, very basic, but I made all these mistakes, so you probably wouldn't, but I'm just showing you kind of, if you're as stupid as me, what might happen. And then you just load it in. And then, if you loaded it in, all of these things should kind of start coming out nice. And let's just very quickly show you the sort of things you can do once you get this. Now, I'm not saying it took me a little while to get this in the right format. If I'm, if I'm being straightforward with you, you can move this out a little. I was told that. And I don't know what I just did here. I hope I didn't do anything to screw it up. I don't want to do that. Okay. Ooh, that must be something I have no clue about. So let's just get kind of our basics in here. Let's put our battery type. And the thing I'm really still concerned about, because I'm kind of old-fashioned, is the cost per kilowatt. And as usual, we better put the average here. Okay. And what's really, really nice about this... I, whoops! No, I got ahead of myself. So you... Now you click on this kind of blank thing again, and you, I'm sure there are a few ways to do this. And then let's put the cost function. And so if we want the high, low, and the average, now I'm going to do this really fast. If you, There's a blank column right at the very end, because in this battery database, at the very, very end, I put a little kind of extra stuff here. And I don't want any of this stuff, do I? I don't want the zinc stuff. I don't want uh, any of this stuff. Probably the, be the best thing to do would have been just to uh, 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 delete it. Now, what you couldn't, can do is in Power BI, you can go to this thing called Edit Queries. And then after you go to Edit Queries, you go to the, you click on kind of one of these columns that, that you don't want to be blank and you just filter it and you instead of selecting all you don't select the one that says null okay i don't think that fi fixed the very very last thing oh did i do it the wrong way huh. i i did it the wrong way of course you now that's kind of like deleting the rows okay and i didn't do that perfectly uh, but mm, good enough for now okay and then we can only show the high and the low. And of course, I, I have done this once already, and this is almost too simple. But if you want to show on this the, the data labels, I'm going to do that quickly. Okay. And we can show the low estimate or the high estimate. Now, what's kind of more interesting is we can then also... First, why don't we do the same kind of thing? And this is the average of the battery cost per kW. And let's put another one that has the, the kind of same thing, but the cost per kWh. And we just put the battery type in here. And then we go to the installed total cost per kWh. And as usual, we go here and put the average. And some, one of these had a really high cost per kWh, okay? Now, here's kind of the problem with it. I, the problem with this, I also want to look at how much storage we have. And I basically want to pick the battery. Well, I'm not wasting money. If my constraint is wind or 
solar power on an island, not on a, uh, a large system. I don't want to waste a whole lot of money paying for storage that I don't need because I have to put in more uh, uh, batteries and more solar panels just in order to get that nighttime load. So, let's look at the uh, duration hours. And let's click on this one and put our duration hours here and, of course, put our battery type perhaps is here and we have all sorts of different hours. And, and we're starting to get a picture that I don't think was in that Lazard thing. We're not there yet. Okay, on this one, I think we should also put our, uh, our data labels on. Okay, and on this one, we can put our data labels on. So you can kind of see, I hope, that it works fairly quickly. Of course, I cheated. And on this one, I, I didn't um, uh, make it average, of course, yet, which was really stupid. Okay, and then uh, here's the best part. And I'm going to make another one another little filter, and on this filter, this time, I'm going to put, instead of just high and low, I'm going to put the battery function in here. And then we, now, suddenly, we can start to see things. If I have frequent, now, let's look at CNI. If I have CNI, then I can see what the cost per KW is, what the cost per KWH is, and this is for a four-hour battery. And here's really what I'm looking at, is how much does it cost me? And I if you don't want these silly 1 or 2K things here, I guess you can uh, go on the la data labels and go down a little. And, and uh, Instead of display here, you can put uh, thousands or something. Or the, that's not thousands. I want it in uh, hmm, none, I guess. Okay. Then uh, we can see kind of uh, how much you're paying per kilowatt of getting the solar power into the battery. Now, if I do a distribution feeder, then we're at three hours, and I'm looking for one that only has one hour, because that's all I care about. And on the island system, they said we need eight hours. I think that's exactly the opposite of what we really need. But on the microgrid, they finally have a one-hour system. The only, re the only kind of technology they have for one hour is, 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 is lithium. So I guess we're going to have to use the lithium. And then we can look at peaker replacement. That's four hours. And residential, that's two hours. And it's kind of multiplying each time. You pay a whole lot for storage. So if we looked at the, let's look at microgrid, 883 for lithium. Let's look at island. For lithium, we have 3,992, about 4,000. So we're paying, ew, it's almost better. I, I, you know, you, you, you kind of wish, I don't know, it would be really nice if they, they had this for one hour of storage, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope somebody corrects me and says I'm full of crap on some of this stuff. I'm just presenting some ideas on some what I think are new topics. Now, the next thing we, we, we might want to do is look at some operational characteristics. So instead of, I'm going to look at the O&M as a, a, a percentage of the capacity and do the same thing. I'll put battery type, and then, of course, I have to, uh, I'm trying to do this quickly. Am I, yeah, I hope I'm getting a tiny bit better. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to put the same two filters in. Oops, uh, I, I love those two things. Number one was to put in just the, the cost estimate. And let's take the low estimate of the costs. And uh, uh, then let's take, I'm clicking on a blank thing, and, and then let's take a second one. You see how nervous I kind of am because I, I want to get through this, and I'm so nervous about making these these uh, uh, videos way too long. And then I put the battery function. And remember, if it was an island, we can kind of see which one, I guess it probably sorts it for you, which one had the highest cost and the lowest cost. And then in addition to this, I don't care about charging cost. We should look at that ourselves. But I do care about the efficiency. 
Okay, and so that's another characteristic, of course, and we put our battery type, and we make sure the efficiency is is average, and I'm not going to waste your time with, with kind of uh, 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 too much stuff here, but if you, let's look at our zinc. I hope that it stayed the same. This was island, and our zinc had the lowest cost, but it also had the lowest efficiency, and it had a high O&M cost. How do you evaluate these kind of trade-offs? And you can see this kind of stuff just starts coming out at you. This is, I think, what it's kind of supposed to do. And then we can, let's do one more. We, we, we have some replacement uh, capacity, and I think the replacement capacity, I looked at that, it's almost always in in kind of year 10. So in this one, let's do one of these uh, stacked ones. And let's put the uh, uh, replacement after 10 years of DC and the replacement after 10 years of AC. And then as usual, we better uh, get our average for both of them, blah, blah, blah. And we put our uh, 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 battery type here. Okay, whoops, uh, that didn't work. Uh, battery function. Is that the right one? And uh, I obviously did something wrong. Okay, and I'm not going to waste any more time with that. Okay, oh, shoot, just let me pause. Okay, I'm sorry for that little embarrassment. So let me try this again. We take this one, which is a stacked bar. We put in the first thing, which is our battery type. That's what we want. And then we want to put in the initial, not the initial cost, the replacement cost for the AC and the DC. And I remember it was after year 10. So we put in the replacement cost for the AC and then for the DC. And we see that, well, this, we better put average as usual. So that wasn't that hard. And you can, of course, mess around with it. And for the microgrid, we, for some reason, had some uh, AC and DC. I, I don't know what, what the kind of... Uh, uh, um, where the scale is. Okay, it's probably here somewhere. But that's another characteristic. That's something else that we have to take account. Final thing we should really take account of is the life. Now, when we finally look at these, it's a little more complicated. We have to count for the, you know, the, the how the, the, the storage, the upfront cost, the uh, O&M cost, the... The, the efficiency, these are two pretty good efficiencies, and finally the life. Uh, uh, and I think that we can get the project life, M-L-M-O, -M project life here. So we just click on a final blank one and, and put this one. And that's going to affect the carrying charge rate. And all of these things have a have a have a pretty big uh, effect on things okay and of course i'm going to put our standard thing back and i think we're starting to get a nice little picture of what's going on and i can 